Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Prophetess Kimberly Hargraves, and I'm the founder of Rejoice Essential Magazines and also Christian Arthur. We are continuing our series today, The Making of a Prophet. So I'm excited about today's broadcast. We have been talking about Zechariah, the prophet. He was a visionary uh, prophet or seer. You know, the Lord dealt with him heavily in nighttime visions. He had eight nighttime visions. He was God's oracle because the word of the lord bubbled up inside of him and he began to speak thus said the lord he had also had lots of encounters with jesus christ he didn't know his name so he called him the branch god shepherd or the high priest and we know as prophets you know if you are a prophet of god a true prophet of god amen the god of abraham isaac and jacob you will have an encounter with the lord jesus christ you're going to have that Amen. Some kind of encounter, whether it was a vision or a dream. Amen. So we're going to be reading from Zechariah. I need to pull this up. I only got my scriptures together, Lord Jesus. But we're going to be reading from Zechariah 7 and 8 today. And I'm just going to skim through it. And we're going to be talking about a lot of other things. Amen. But prophets, God needs our total, total obedience, not half our obedience. But total obedience, amen. So if God gives you a word and he says, don't don't speak. It's not the, the right time to speak. I haven't released you to speak that word. You need to obey God. You need to obey God. And prophets, do not let people uh, put, um, you know, try to test you and try you and try to, try to make you validate yourself or try to make you prove yourself who you are when god has already told you that you were his prophet amen because the enemy will use anyone and we need to be confident of who god said we are amen now I know that we got to go through things like for example if god sends us to a new region you know it's going to be people there that want to try us prove us test us they say okay is this person a prophet you know they got this title you know prophet prophetess but are they really who they say they are amen so it's going to be time where we got to be proven amen but that's okay because god is with you god is going to show himself mightily and god is going to back us up amen it's going to back you up so i want to encourage somebody today so prophets we need to make sure that we are in right standing with god you know we need to right make sure that we are in right standing with god and that you know we have a peaceful relationship with god amen there's nothing grieving the holy spirit amen because we i just feel the anointing of this word so strong we don't want to grieve the holy spirit you know he, that's our friend amen i'm telling you i mean you could still like the gifts and the calls that god has on our life it can work without repentance but you just want the presence of the lord amen you want his presence you want that anointing don't lose your anointing by being in disobedience you know don't don't grieve the holy spirit don't lose your anointing amen that's a word for somebody don't lose what god is doing in your life don't forfeit the, the destiny amen you know god has amazing plans in your life and for seasoned prophets god will keep you quiet god will sit have you sitting down you know god will have you in that that um position where you just serving 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 and you know somebody else's vision or call and help them out with their own ministry before god will launch you into your ministry or give you a, an assignment but at the right time prophet i don't even know where i'm going here you know but at the right time prophet the door is going to open for you and god is going to bring more exposure amen because you went through the test he can trust you you know he's saying my son my daughter what is your motives really for serving me what is this you know and prophets you know that when god starts using you you got to stay humble you really got to stay humble because you know uh, i see this all the time like people they they want to worship the prophet and that's no 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 you know when people start saying thank you man of god woman of god okay yeah okay but you may always make sure that god gets the glory always make sure that you give turn it back to turn people back unto god amen you are just god's messenger you're just his mouthpiece so whether or not god wants to do signs and miracles and wonders however god chooses to use you prophet you want to make sure you stay humble in this thing amen and don't get the big head don't get the big head amen because you remember the enemy he was anointed satan lucifer was anointed he was an anointed cherubim and in heaven and he was actually great looking 
but he had pride in him and that pride would it, it got him kicked out of heaven amen so don't lose your anointing because of the spirit of pride amen don't don't take the bait don't take the bait stay humble make sure you're in the right standing with god and i always tell people the key to prophetic accuracy if you want to grow more in the prophetics you want to increase more in the prophetics have a relationship with god Amen. I'm telling you, this works for me. You know, at nine o'clock every night, I get on my face and I let God speak. But throughout my day, I'm 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 warring in tongues. I'm, I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, and I always create an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere in my home for worship because I need to know. You know, I need to be able to hear what God is saying. And God is so amazing. I might hear something and then I just write it down. Like I got so many prophetic words. You know, I just write it down. And then I look back maybe a week later, a month later. I'm like, oh, this thing that came to pass. But at the time when I received that word, it didn't make sense. It didn't make no sense whatsoever. But I'm here to tell you, I just want to encourage you to, to trust what God is doing. Amen. Pass the test. You know, let God promote you. And don't try to always promote yourself. Because somebody right here is watching me right now. You're getting so frustrated because you're doing everything by yourself. But God's saying, wait on me. Let me do it. Amen. Because God is just preparing you. And you're not, God is not done yet with you. Preparing you. But at the right time, the right moment, the door is going to open wide open. And nobody's going to be able to shut it. I don't care who doesn't like you. Who doesn't feel like you're qualified. Who doesn't feel like you're a prophet. But God says, you're my prophet. I called you. And I'm the God that's opened up this door that no one can shut. And no enemy in hell is going to stop the blessing that I have for you, says God. Amen. So, be encouraged, prophets. Be encouraged. I want to tell you guys to be in total, total obedience to God. Amen. Don't compromise. I don't care. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care who uh feel some kind of way uh hallelujah about you my god give me one second hallelujah this 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 trust what god has told you this trust everything he has told you he's so faithful hallelujah but we need to make sure we're in right standing with God. We need to make sure we have the peace of God. And prophets, we know a lot of things are going on right now. But is God really speaking that or is that from your flesh? Don't ever minister from a place of pain. Make sure it's God speaking and not you. Amen. Um, I see that. I see that so many times, you know, like something will happen and they got something to say. But did God tell you to say that? You know, with all the with all the terrorism and everything that's going on right now, you know, all the racism and all the division. I knew from the beginning. And matter of fact, God told me this last year, and I put it on my my timeline. You know, people say I was a false prophet. People say I'm prophet lying. But you know, I'm not surprised. Prophets, you know, you're, you're not going to be surprised if you are in the will of God. If you're in a position of you know, the right posture, God's going to speak to you. He's going to prepare you and tell you what he's going to do in the earth realm. We're earth realm. So we're already prayed up and we're already prepared for these things to happen. So God told me last year, he said, uh, and I put it on my Facebook around like the around, around this time now, I need to pull it up. Amen. But he said, there's going to be increased murders in public. People are going to be scared. You know, it's, it's coming to pass right now. It's manifesting right now. You know, um, I told two people in my innermost circle, you know, because I'm the kind of prophet. I don't want a lot of attention drawn to myself. That's why I do these series to make another prophet on YouTube. I don't put this on Periscope. I don't need a big audience, you know, you know. So um, he told me, he said, the KKK, Ku Klux Klan are going to be emerging and doing something crazy. I seen that. I seen it like. I think it was April. Here it is July, and it's coming to pass. So now I, I go. I, I'm, I'm in my on my news feed on Facebook. I see something about the Aryan Brothers and the Ku Klux Klan, and they going to launch an all-out all, all attack of war today, this weekend. Something crazy. And I was like, God, you told me that in April. And I have people that can validate it. People that are closest to me, they can validate this. Amen. But I didn't put it out there on social media because what were my motives? If I put it out there on social media. Did God tell me to warn the people? No. God told me, hey, this is going to happen. Pray for it. Pray against it. Amen. So that's what I've been doing. You know, God didn't tell me to put that stuff out there. Amen. 
why would I prophets when you release a word that God didn't tell you to release it's going to draw attention to yourself and it's going to make you a target of the enemy God wants his prophets sometimes to be on the wall and to be stealthy so we can be able to go in the enemy's camp in the realm of the spirit and tear some things down amen Amen. I don't care if people say, oh, uh, yeah, she prophesied that. Prophetess Harper has prophesied that. And April, I don't care about that. You know, God gets the glory. You know, somebody needs to be behind the scenes, prophet, and praying. Somebody needs to be behind the scenes and, and born in, in, in the realm of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what is your motives, prophet? Every revelation God gives you is not to be shared. There's so many things I see in the realm of the Spirit. I see demons. You know, and that tells me who I'm fighting against. I don't put this stuff on social media. I'm like, okay, devil, God has opened up my eyes. I can see you, you know, so I'm going to be praying against you. What's your name? You know, I'm going to cast you down. I'm, I'm trying to come against that principality in the spirit realm. Amen. To see a change in our nation, to see a change in our states and our cities. Amen. So prophets, it's important to have a strong prayer life. It is so important, amen, to have a strong prayer life. So we need to make sure we have peace with God. We're in right standing with God. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. What is your motives for being on Facebook 50 times a day and posting and posting and posting? No, if you if you have that much revelation, God ain't speaking to you. That stuff is coming from you, amen? Because a true prophet, a true man and woman of God, they are on their face, amen? And they're doing something, amen? They're praying, interceding, or they're doing something that God has given them to do. I have an assignment. Right now, God has given me an assignment for, you know, a local body in my area. So I'm, I'm making sure that I'm obedient to what God has told me to do and make sure that vision of that house, you know, is fulfilled. Amen. I'm not on social media posting everything that God gives me because guess what? I'm more strategic on my knees, praying and interceding. So that's a word for somebody. That is a word for somebody. So we're going to get into um, Zechariah. Um, I can I can identify with him. Amen. I can identify with this prophet. I, I'm i loving this prophet right now. Maybe you can identify with Zechariah. I, I know I can. So pretty much I want to encourage you guys. Obedience. I keep talking about obedience because somebody needs to obey God. Obey God. Obedience is better than fasting. Amen. If you don't get anything from Zechariah 7. Obedience is better than fasting. I don't care how much you sow, how much you tithe, how much seeds you don't plant it, how long you don't fast it. If you don't obey God, okay, what, what fruit are you getting? The word tells us obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. All those things are sacrificial. You know, all those things are sacrifice. You know, like tithing, giving more, and fasting. Okay. Or in praying, you know, giving your time, praying more is actual uh, uh, another sacrifice. But if you don't obey what God is telling you, then it's in vain. It's nothing. God wants our total obedience prophet. Sometimes God is going to tell you to be quiet. I didn't tell you to say anything. You know, some things I know about people. They don't even know that I know. And God will show me things about this person, what they're dealing with. But my job is not to make it known that I know. It's to go and war with war for that person in prayer. Well, that person could be suicidal. That person could be on the verge of backsliding and giving up. But God is saying, daughter, daughter, look at that man over there. You know, he has a a, a sex addiction. He uh, masturbates at night. I'm, I'm being real, you know. But it's not my job to say, thus said the Lord, you masturbate. And it's no, that's no. The devil is a liar. No, my job is to go and pray like, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I lift this man up. I break every sexual addiction off this man at the rope in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Jesus on, upon him, God. I, I lose the spirit of purity and holiness and righteousness on this man. Amen. So that is some of the assignments, amen, that the Lord has given me. And I... I keep it confidential. Some of the things, I got to take it to the grave. Amen. These people don't know. You know that I know, but hey, God shows me things. Not for me to expose them, but to pray for them. Amen. And even if that man did have that kind of addiction, I'm still going to show him the love of God. He will never know that I know. Amen. So, obedience is better than fasting. Amen. So, here in Zechariah chapter 7, we see... Uh, these religious people, they were so religious and they had a, a, a annual fast 
And it was like, hey, do we still got to do this fast? You know, and, and God was like, are you really fasting for me? Or are you really eating for me? Or are you doing it for your own motives? God is looking at your heart, prophet. God is seeing the prophets, uh, the people's hearts as well. God doesn't care about how good looking you are. He doesn't care how smart you are. He doesn't care about the, the finest clothes you wear. He looks at your heart. Amen. So if even if you were to fast, if your motives ain't right, then it's, what's the point? I don't care. Even if you were to sow a big seed, if your motives ain't right, then what's the point? You're going to reap your reward. Amen. But he is looking for your obedience. He's looking for your love. Amen. So, you know, they wanted to know if they should continue this fast. So God asked the question. Uh-oh. I don't know about you prophets, but we already know when God asks us a question, he already knows the answer. He already knows the answer. So they, you know, they um asked, God asked them a question. He said, did you really fast for me? You know, because he saw their motives. And a lot of prophets right now, just repent. Because God is looking at your motives, your selfish motives, your selfish ambitions, your self-righteous motives. Yep, I said it. You know, I said it. Now everybody got something to say. You know, they want the limelight. They're drawing attention to themselves. They're up there speaking things that God didn't tell them to speak. Because they're operating in their own spirit. And I, I'm sorry, I, I'm just going to expose it today. Amen. God didn't tell you to say that, prophet. God don't want you on Facebook posting or Twitter, you know, a thousand times a day. Like, ooh, 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 and acting out in your flesh. That's not what God wants for you to do, prophet. God wants you in your prayer closet, prophet. God wants you to lay prostrate in his presence, prophet. God wants you to seek his face, prophet. God wants you to worship him, prophet. Amen. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you on social media posting all this, the revelations and the secrets he has given unto you. You're out of order. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear that. I know I'm probably stepping on somebody's toes today, but we got to get this thing right, people. We got to get this thing right. You know, do not fall into error. Amen. The, the, the worst thing you can do, prophet, is to release a word out of season. Because a few things can happen. You know, the person is not going to receive it. You know, they're probably going to get mad at you and God, you know, and they could shake their faith up. You know, I'm telling you, they're not, they're probably not ready for that word or that revelation. That's why you got to use wisdom and a sign of you keeping your mouth closed is prophetic maturity. Maturity you need to be mature in this thing. Amen. So biblical fasting, whenever we fast for God, even in, in the Bible, it needs to, it's, it's like we're humbling our soul before God because sometimes when we fast you know if you're not especially not used to fasting an extended time you're weak you're physically your flesh is weak you're hungry sometimes you get fatigued you get a headache you're dizzy whatever but we need God we need God to get us through that thing so biblical fasting is uh to express humility because it, it's really an act of humbleness, you know, and dependence on God. Like, God, get me through this fast. You told me to do a seven-day fast, God. I, I can't do this by myself. I, I need you. So that's, that's why it's important to be in a posture of prayer and fasting. Amen. Dependence on God during the time of prayer. You got to depend on God to get you through, prophet. Amen. When was the last time you fasted, prophet? Push back the plate. My God, prophets, we should live a fasted lifestyle. You know, I'm telling you, it, it vexes me when a lot of people... Um, Oh, I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm going to be quiet. Mm, mm, mm. I'll take it to God in prayer. But I just, I just get so vexed. Amen. That you, 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 you say, I could eat a piece of chicken and still hear from God. Okay, that's true. But I'm telling you, that fasting is going to get that pride out of you because you're arrogant. That fast is going to get, you know, the increased anointing on your life. Amen. That fast is going to be able to get more revelatory information, knowledge, and increase the signs and wonders that god wants to th do through you amen i'm telling you you have to pay the price some people right now are saying god i want my ministry to go to the next level but what price are you willing to pay what price are you willing to pay if god say daughter i want you to fast for like three days just water just fast you know whatever whatever god is telling you to do are you willing to sacrifice something give up something okay god I know this hurts. I know it don't feel good fasting. I'm hungry, God. Uh, you know, but God, you told me to push back the plate and I'm going to obey you, God. And I'm going to pay the price. And I, want, I bet you something God will give you 
an idea to generate wealth as never before. God will give you an idea, uh, something, instructions, uh, my God, to take your ministry to the next level. Amen. So, in, in verses 12 and 13, in verses 12 and 13, we see, we see that disobedience led these people into captivity. So whenever we disobey God, that's why I'm so adamant today on obedience. Whenever we disobey God, I'm telling you, it's like you put yourself uh, in a position for the enemy that caused chaos in your life, prophet. Even the people, you might not be a prophet, but you're listening to this. Maybe you are having a hunger and an urge just for the, the prophetic teaching. You know, I, I know a lot of people that are not prophets, but they love teaching on prophecy. Whenever we obey God, whenever we disobey God, it opens up the portal to the enemy. And it can bring you into bondage, oppression, even captivity. That's what happened to these ch the children of Israelites. They disobey God. They disobeyed them. Verse, verse 12, and, you know, the Lord sent his former prophets before Zechariah, you know, and they didn't hear, they refused to listen. You know, prophets, God will send you those to minister to people. They won't hear, they won't hear nothing you got to say. But it's, that's just God's grace and mercy uh, extended. So he can't, so people can't say, God, you didn't warn us, you know. So people weren't hearing. And the former prophets before Jack, uh, Zechariah, and they end up getting into bondage and captivity right so god one of his wrath one of his acts of judgment was to send him in captivity to a babylonian amen to babylonia whatever we have to listen we have to be obedient amen so and also in verse number 14 um if we do your study on israel we know that they have been scattered they were scattered i think like what in the 1920s 30s 40s they were end up scattered and they end up coming back like a, a group of them they end up coming back to the mainland or something like that you know in, in the early 1900s and even like maybe up to the 1960s you know but they were scattered for a time of season so Zechariah prophesied this he prophesied that they were going to get scattered amen so uh for their disobedience that's why it's important to obey God Obey God. You don't want to leave the promised land. You don't want to leave the land of blessings that God has for you for your disobedience. So in Zechariah chapter 8, it makes a promise to the remnant. Amen. You know, we are the remnant of God. God is calling up his remnant and he has great things in store for his remnant people. Amen. You know, and we also read that God is zealous over Jerusalem. And I want to prophesy he's zealous over you. He, he cares for you. You know, he has great things in store for Jerusalem. He has great things in store for your life as well. Amen. So, Zechariah, he prophesied, you know, the renewal of God's covenant with his people. Amen. Because they were in exile. They were like, they were discouraged right now. They're so discouraged. And it's like, I, I don't know, God, what you have in store for us. God, I don't know. But we see, if you've been following this series, you see that God used Zechariah to prophesy the rebuilding of the temple you know he, he used Zechariah to prophesy the the coming of the Messiah he he used Zechariah to encourage the people and to tell them to repent and get your hearts back right with God and if you repent and get your hearts right back with God God will restore his covenant with you God will bless you God will prosper you amen so that's some some of the things that prophets do you know God will send us to give a word of encouragement you know, in the words that the prophets speak, it brings restoration. Amen. And prophecy, if you don't know what prophecy is, it's foretelling the future. You know, it's different from a word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is something right now. But prophecy is like foretelling. So, Zechariah, he prophesied things like 400 years before him, you know, about the coming of the Messiah. And he prophesied things way up. Uh, uh, he didn't see all his prophecies fulfilled. Amen. So prophets, God will use us sometimes to prophesy something in the next generation. Amen. So we see down here like a great promise that God has for the remnant. Amen. We see this and it's a great promise and we can use this for our life as well. And Zechariah starting like 11 and 13, you know, and he's talking about the remnant, the remnant. He said, our seeds are going to be prosperous. Our vineyards are going to give their fruit. 
you know, it sucks to, to keep tolling and working and working with your hands and labor and heart and not see the fruit of your hands or the labor of your hands, you know. But he, God says when you plant that seed, my God, the ground is going to give her increase. So you're going to, every seed that you plant, you're going to get that harvest. Amen. You're going to reap a mighty harvest and the heavens shall give their due. So when you plant that seed and you get that harvest, heaven is looking to plant it. Heaven is pouring down rain upon that harvest. Amen. And it's going to cost the, his remnant to possess all these things. He says it's going to come to pass. Amen. He said you were cursed before, but he said, I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you and you're going to be a blessing. So he says, fear not, but your hands are going to be strong. I don't know about you, but that's a great promise. That is a great promise. Amen. That is something great. I don't know. A lot of people right now you're watching and you are doing everything right. God has called you as his remnant people. Amen. People he can trust. People that are right standing with him. You know, it's a lot of people that went astray. You know, like initially they started off right, but they got pride in their hearts, greed in their hearts, lust in their hearts, and they end up getting tricked, you know, by the, 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 the pride of life, the, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. You remember how Jesus Christ went up to the mountain, Satan tempted him, he tempted him with those three things, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh. You know, but Jesus passed. So everybody underneath the sound of my voice, you got to get tested in that those three things. Amen. The enemy is going to test you in those three things. So prophet, you may be in the wilderness season because Jesus got tested in the wilderness. And in that season, that's when God is testing you. And the enemy will try to come and test you with those three things or those various issues. But pass the test, pass the test. And you are, I want to prophesy, you are God's remnant. God has something amazing for you. Amen. I, I just read these promises. Your seed is going to be prosperous and give fruit and give increase. And the heaven's going to pour down dew. And you're going to possess all these things. Just obey God. Be in right standing with God. You know, God's going to save you. God is going to deliver you. I'm here to prophesy that everything that is, that's troubling, troubling you this day, that God is going to deliver you. Amen. And God is going to pour out his anointing on you. A uh, fresh revelation is received. Fresh revelation has come upon you. A fresh prophetic all is coming upon your life now in Jesus' name, God. Lord God, thank you that you're going to begin to see as never before in the realm of the spirit. I, I speak to your spiritual eyes to open now in Jesus' name. I speak to your prophetic ears, the antennas, to be on the right frequency always in Jesus' name. Amen. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. I want to tell you guys to be in peace with God. Be in right standing with God. Obey God. Amen. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't have a motor mouth. Amen. Because God wants to trust you. If God say don't speak, if God has not given you permission or authority to speak, be quiet. Be quiet. You don't want to release a word out of season. You don't want to release a word out of season. Amen. So be encouraged, prophets. Know that I love you with the love of the Lord. And I will be back for the next making of the prophets. God bless.